Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of The Democratic View. I'm the hostess, and my name is Phyllis Italiano. And with me today, I have a new friend, not an old friend. I usually say an old friend, but this is a new friend. This is somebody who I met through a newspaper article about her. Her name is Minerva Perez, and she is the executive director of the organization of Latina, Latino, Latino Americana. Mm -hmm. Latino Americans. Latino, or Latino Americans. Mm -hmm. Is that what you say? Because yeah. it looks like it says Americana in there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's similar. It's an old article. <laughs> yeah. I cut it out a long time ago. So tell us a little bit about who you are and where you come from and what's your background and schooling and things like that. We like to know something sure, about Sure, sure. <laughs> right. uh, so um, I was born in Manhattan, uh, raised in Miami. I came back to New York to study uh, at NYU for college. And then I stayed in New York, stayed in the city for almost 15 years, and came out to the East End about 10 years ago. So now I, am, uh, I live in Sag Harbor, I'm a homeowner in Sag Harbor. And uh, my lineage and why I have such crazy hair is um, I am Puerto Rican, Italian, and Polish. So that's my background. <laughs> that, is, that is an incredible background. I don't think I've ever heard that combination before. <laughs> So, um, so I would think that that hair is more Puerto Rican than, than Italian be. or Polish. Yeah, yeah it could be. Uh, but anyway, it's great hair. Mm. I envy you that. <laughs> now, uh, what I was wondering about is what, where did you go to school and what did you study? Okay, so I went to NYU. I went to Tisch School of the Arts and studied uh, through the Strasbourg Institute for theater. So my background is theater. Although I promise I'm not just acting as pretending to be uh, someone committed to the work of Ola. Um, so acting was my background, my passion. Um, but I always knew that through acting, there's a very thin line between acting and social activism. You're sort of always, many people are kind of wavering over that line. Uh, many times I thought either I'm going to law school next or social work school next. Um, and I continued with acting. I started a theater company um, with my then husband at the time. And we did all new American work. Uh, we did that in the city um, out of the Bank Street Theater in the West Beth Complex in the West Village. Uh, There's a lot of names in there of people and things that I know very much about, uh, including Mr. Go. Strasberg. Yeah, all right. Uh, so, uh, so you did some acting. What brought you out here? Um, uh, Definite sort of life change, um, ending of a marriage, if I'll be quite honest. <laughs> that, that was part of it. Well, that'll um, do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. Marriage that'll do is it. always <laughs> the beginning of a new life. Of a new life, yes. Um, but I had always been interested in the East End. However, I kind of thought I would end up more in a place like Mattituck. I just sort of thought that as my sort of serenity now type of thing. Um, but uh, we have a daughter, and so it was going to be better to be sort of on the South Fork. And, um, and I love Sag Harbor, and so yeah, I ended Sag up. Sag Harbor is yeah. truly wonderful. Love it, so I get, to, I get to live there, not too far from the bay, and, uh, and I enjoy it. Sounds wonderful. So now uh, I'd like you to tell me a little bit about the group that you work for. Mm -hmm. Now, you also started out working out here with another group. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, sure. I was fortunate enough to uh, work for about six years with the retreat. Um, I was the director of the Retreats Domestic Violence Shelter, Crisis Shelter, um, mm. that uh, served about, on average, about 150 uh, people, uh, women, children, um, some men, uh, throughout an entire year. Um, and these were uh, really severe, severe cases of domestic violence. Uh, so being able to work with those families and kind of understand the struggles around, um, around their cases was tremendous for me to kind of gain that experience. It also allowed me to create relationships with uh, local political leaders, local law enforcement, um, 
other supporters um, around the community of the shelter itself and beyond. So it really kind of opened doors uh, to working with people and agencies that were uh, strong advocates uh, on behalf of victims of domestic violence and the children, because there's so much work that is done with children, but there's so much work that needs to be done for children coming through the cycle of violence. So I was really I, happy. I to be would part imagine of that. being in a, uh, a woman who uh, was in the classroom and also as an administrator, um, the children are the ones who are um, most scarred by mm -hmm. these kind of situations. Mm -hmm. It's really very tough for a child mm -hmm. to get over, mm -hmm. or I, I don't think you ever get really get over it. I would say to go on from mm -hmm. the domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. So there's always a lot of work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and how did you, so what was your next step? Uh, the next step essentially was OLA, um, and that's an organization that I had encountered early on when I moved out here, and I wasn't working for the retreat, I was doing something else. Um, I was doing some theater as well and uh, producing some theater at Guild Hall and some other spaces that I produced in. And, um, and I started reaching out to local um, politicians and leaders to find out where can I get funding for some of the work I'm doing. And as I was doing that, I kept asking, well, who's, who, where are some leaders in your Latino community? Because I was hearing all this very negative stuff coming through the Steve Levy uh, administration. And I just was so shocked because I grew up in Miami with a nice integration. My high school was like, you know, 33 and a third, African-American, Latino, and white. Uh, and then I was in the city and then living in Brooklyn and Manhattan. And there was just this great integration of, of, you know, human beings living together, working together. And then I come out to the east end of Long Island. I'm thinking, why? Why are we, why is this dialogue? Why is this happening? And so I wanted to find out who are the leaders. And I just kept hearing the same name over and over again, Isabel Sepulveda de Scanlon. And I was like, I'm going to meet this woman. I'm going to meet this woman. And finally I did. And I got involved with Ola at that point as a volunteer. And I did quite a few things as a volunteer. Um, but it became hard to do that and also to do my full-time job. Uh, so I kind of pulled back a little bit from Ola at that point. But this whole time have been thinking, well, what's happening now? What's happening now? And right now is the time. And so when this opportunity came up, I thought, you know what, it's, uh, it's the time for me to, to jump in. Yes, we've had Isabel on the show. Mm -hmm. You know, she publishes, I call it Bose, the, her. Bose Latina. Is that, is yeah, that the yeah, way? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always afraid I'm going to mispronounce yeah, or, right. or pronounce it with an Italian accent. <laughs> uh, so, um, so what are the goals of this organization? Well, um, the goals, the main mission remains the same, to support the development within the Latino community in terms of economics, education, cultural, um, support that development at the same time acting as a bridge um, between the non-Latino and Latino communities and also even between the Latino to Latino communities because we know that there, you know, there are yes. over 22 uh, countries and, and, um, yes. and cultures that you don't just assume because the Spanish language is sort of this, it, does, it doesn't necessarily act right. as the uniting force entirely. Um, you want to make sure that you're always sharing what's different about your culture, what, mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's exciting for OLA to be a part of that as well. There are three main pillars of OLA, and that would be arts, education, and advocacy. So those are the three main areas and focuses that we have. And there's quite a bit you can do with each of those, but that's what we're focusing on. So what are the things that you do in each of those? In each of those, all right. Give, um, us, a, give us a hint. I'll give you a hint. So for arts, um, a really big one uh, is that OLA is having its, going to its 13th year for its film festival. So it's a Spanish language film festival uh, with English subtitles. So again, a wonderful cultural bridge. Usually about 50% Latino or Spanish speaking and 50% non-Spanish speaking will attend this event. And it's gone on over the years. Um, mostly uh, with the partnership of the Parish Museum. Um, we've also branched out in the past uh, to also work with Guildhall and some other organizations and, and venues. But uh, coming up November 11th, we're gonna be at Parish Museum again. Um, I've also um, reached out to Guildhall, so I'm gonna have that space also for the, thir for the uh, 12th, which is a Saturday. And we're looking at the possibly- The 12th of November? Of November. Okay. And possibly another venue, maybe even in Hampton Bay, so we can have a nice broad um, approach. Uh, and the films that we're going to have will be Spanish language, English subtitles. That's uh, a, a fantastic event. And um, so that's an example of arts. Plus, what we just recently came from is our a big event, Soy Maria, Soy Mujer, 
which was an event that we produced at Guild Hall that we had about 200 people attend. Um, Spanish language event, although everyone was invited. Uh -huh. um, live music. Um, and then we had a play reading, a play that I have written um, that has to do with domestic violence. And so Maritza Goucher was a wonderful actress. I just have to throw a shout out to her because she was wonderful. She participated. She's also one of the founding members of the Latino Advisory Committee. Uh, yes. For East Hampton, yes. So she participated, and um, and a recent guest, and a recent guest here, and uh, and we had a wonderful turnout, and then we also had some spoken word that we did, uh, predominantly in Spanish, but some in English, and uh, it was a wonderful evening, really feel good, positive energy, um, really nice event. So that's another aspect of the arts, um, because I, you know Ola wants to make sure that that while we're integrating our cultures and learning about new cultures and, and new languages, that some of the younger generations, we don't want to get to the point where they're ashamed of their language or where they've come from. So um, making sure there's always an inroad to the wonderful arts that come from uh, Spanish language uh, cultures, such as the playwriting, the filmmaking, the, the music, um, the dance. Let's make sure that we still maintain a connection to that as well. And what were the other uh, areas, though, that you were interested in? Sure. One of the other pillars is education. Um, and education um, would be uh, the kind of classes and uh, initiatives that we offer, whether it be um, leadership training forums that we put together, uh, computer classes in Spanish, uh, English as a second language. Um, we want to continue with our leadership uh, forums and workshops. We want to build on those because there's, there's quite a distance that we can, we can go with that. Um, and also recently, education has come to mean uh, what can Ola do to, uh, to help celebrate the work that certain school districts are doing that better incorporate their Latino parent base um, to, you know, to the tune of New York State Board of Education regulations, you know, not trying to pull in crazy and wonderful new ideas that cost a bunch of money, but let's just make sure that the right thing is going on. And then beyond that, what can we do to help encourage that great work? What can we do to maybe act as a bridge as well, um, where maybe some Latino parents are being a little hesitant to get involved? Because what we see is that Latino parents are very much interested in the education of their child. There is not this sort of myth um, that people just sort of uh, want something for free or that they don't care about that aspect of their, of their child's life. It is the farthest thing from the truth. Education is extremely important. However, there needs to be a sort of pathway to have that communication between um, the parent base and the school and to know how they can be involved. Okay, I, I being an educator, I'm going to uh, put my two cents in over the, on this one All now. Right. Uh, one of the things I find to be very important is for the parents to uh, be a little bit more active in learning the English language mm -hmm. so that their child is not what we call parentified. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Sure, of course. It means that the child becomes the parent mm -hmm. because they are the interpreters mm -hmm. of what the, it, what mm -hmm. the school is doing to the parents. Sure, sure. So that's why it's very important for parents to have a basis in, in English. Good, definitely. And as they're learning the language, there also needs to be a very clearly understood policy so that the school is never acting or asking a child to translate for a parent, and that there are some materials that can certainly be translated into Spanish. So as that parent is learning the language, there also needs to be the side from the administrative side that helps to bridge that gap so that the child is not parentified and that critical information is also you don't know kids. Parent. I know kids. Mm -hmm. And they will say, oh, no, Mom, here's what it is. Oh, yeah, sure, exactly. I, I oh, know, they'll Mom, use I it. I know how children they'll are. They'll use it. Having yeah. spent my life with them, yeah. especially on the elementary school level, <laughs> when <laughs> they look so innocent and believable, and <laughs> yeah. in the meantime, they're taking over, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, especially when they've done something wrong. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's a very important thing. One of the things I would hope that you would be working on also is uh, – there needs to be some way in which uh, people who are interested in furthering their education mm -hmm. can get a GED mm -hmm, mm -hmm. locally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it's offered in Hampton Bays, but after a hard day's work, it's yeah, very hard to drive right. to Hampton Bays. You know, that can be particularly in the warmer days. Warmer, you know, we know what the traffic is like. Actually, the, the traffic is like that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Going winter, summer, spring, or fall. Mm -hmm. But to get to Hampton Bays uh, is too much. No, you're absolutely so right. we need to, to start to try to get 
uh, maybe through BOCES, a GED offered yeah. locally mm -hmm. so that people can go either to the high school or through the library and mm -hmm. work on that GED. And then that's a pathway for further education for them. That's wonderful. And that's something that really needs to be done. I'm going to put, put that put in. Put it on me because, I'm you know, putting the it gentleman, in your hands, I work honey. with uh, John Weish, who uh, is, I, I forget his title, so forgive me, John, but he's uh, really high up there in BOCES uh, administrative um, echelon. So I'd love to bring this back to him and find out, you know, are there things that are mm, cooking or not and how we can make that happen. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, because I, I have, uh, you know, working in, in certain air, political areas where I've met a lot of, of Latino people, it is something that has come up more than more sure. than once, many times, I would say. It's, it's how do I get a GED without going to Hampton Bays, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so. That's great, thank you. That's your charge. Now, what was the <laughs> other pillar that you had? Advocacy. Okay, tell advocacy. us about advocacy. Sure. Um, well, early on when I was first doing some volunteer work for OLA uh, and hearing these anti-immigrant uh, resolutions that were coming through Steve Levy's administration, um, advocacy presented itself to me where I would go in front of the board of legislators and, and speak out against some of this legislation that they were looking to pass. Um, now, as an executive director for OLA, really making sure that we are open as an organization to hear the different things that might be going on, but we are not, we are not, uh, we don't have lawyers on our staff, you know, we don't have a super large organization. Uh, we've got a lot of supporters, but we're not going to go down every rabbit hole. What we are going to do is create a real strong link to, to references, uh, to referrals. Uh, so we have on our new website a whole section for resources so that people can uh, also get information right there at the website, which is, uh, Ola of Eastern Long Island .org. Um, but when it comes to certain aspects that really require uh, a voice to get involved uh, and to step in, Ola is going to is going to work to be that voice. So the, I'll give you two examples of that right now. One of them right now is working within Spring School. Um, so there's some work we're doing now. Some articles that just came out today and yesterday on that. And, yes, um, we had a meeting of a Spring School Board. Yeah. And there was a group of parents who were to the side in the back where I happened to be sitting, and they were getting an interpretation of mm -hmm. from Spanish to English mm -hmm. for, I mean, from English to Spanish yes, for these yeah. people. I was at well, the same meeting. Oh, you were you I really? Was, yeah. I was wearing red again. I don't always wear red, but I was wearing red. Um, Gee, see, I didn't know you then, so, and you didn't know me I because didn't I was wearing either. black, okay. which I often wear. <laughs> but working with Springs and encouraging them in a direction that is ultimately going to be something that, uh, that all children and all parents are going to benefit from uh, sort of lifting the level of, uh, of, of the approach of parent involvement in uh, the child's education, the Latino parents' involvement. Uh, I won't go into too many more details right now, but, and the other aspect of advocacy is that I've been named, uh, I think, one of the only non-governmental entities or people um, to uh, the search committee for the next uh, chief of police for Southampton Town. So I'll be, I'm on that search committee. Oh, right. They, yes, they need a new... Uh... He's retiring. He planned his retirement for a while uh -huh. back, but he's retiring, I think, in September. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, that will be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored to be on that committee. And uh, there's a, you know, I, and I'm going to reach out to him for a lot of his guidance on what he's seen as challenges. And then I'm going to, I'm reaching out to our Latino community and some of the work that I've done to, uh, to make sure I ask some really good questions. <laughs> well, uh, and getting back to the spring school, yeah. I mean, uh, we have a very large Latino uh, 52%. population. 52%. Yes, I know. I know. It's. I was going to just say very large. It's Fifty-two percent. Fifty-two percent. That is. That's that is what quite it is. large. Yeah. And that puts uh, a lot of uh, pressure on the people who run the school to make sure that they are number one communicating with the parents. Mm -hmm. That they are also um, have a very good program in ESL. You know, mm -hmm. for the English language learners, as we call them. Uh, ELLs, ELLs and, yeah. and, uh, and also for the parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to have at the school I was an administrator in Yonkers, which was a uh, bilingual school, as mm -hmm. I mentioned to you privately before, we had classes. Mm -hmm. As soon as the kids went into their classrooms, we had classes for the parents right awesome. there. Awesome. Wow. Right there, uh, you know, and, uh, and they had, we had a you know, a teacher who would spend the first hour and a half of her day 
of working with mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. and doing English mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And that was very helpful because, you know, sure, sure. they really wanted to be able to know what was going on in the school, yeah. understand what was expected of them, you know, how they could help their children mm -hmm. to achieve more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was what we did. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice to see something like that going on in, in spring mm -hmm. school. I'm sure there's an empty room somewhere. There, there could be. I mean, I, you know, I just, just to mention that Ola has been very sensitive to, to a delicate balance in a community like Springs um, to not want to bring initiatives or ideas that cost a lot of money. Um, you know, I was at that budget meeting and, you know, my eyes were crossing. And, <laughs> like, and of course, of all the meetings to be the first translated meeting, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't even handle this in English. Um, were you but, the translator? No, no, but I, just being, just taking it in in English was hard. You know, oh. with all of it, where did this money go, and that parentheses, and how that got turned there, it's uh, it's a lot to take in. But in terms of adding or or being an organization that is going to be seen as coming in and saying, well, spend more money here, or spend more money there. Well, um, I don't think you know, that doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily have to happen mean that a way. great deal of money. It just means yeah. that uh, what you'd have to free up is some um, uh, Spanish-speaking teacher who yeah. could you know, provide that service. Mm -hmm. But it's very important for I think so too. You know, for people to to have it there mm -hmm. when they before they pick up their kids or after they drop off their kids when they've got an hour in the morning. I know many of them, mm -hmm. are, of course, are going on to jobs to work. But the ones who can be there, I think, would would definitely take advantage of that. I mean, that's that that would be something that I would not be surprised to see a lot of support for um, if something like that could happen. In the meanwhile, just 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 shy of that would be working with the district and making sure that um, that just in terms of abiding by New York State Board of Ed regulations, uh, in terms of registration, registering a child, in terms of uh, translated documents, and sort of those are the aspects that you want to make sure are, are happening to start, and then in terms of building from there. Um, the, other, the other thing I think is very important as well is that oftentimes communities are presented in different light, in a different light, uh, than they really are. I went to that meeting, that Board of Ed meeting, the first ever translated one. I thought the parents were so, the non-Spanish speaking parents were, seemed to be absolutely fine and, and applaud the fact that they, they, they know that there's this diversity and, they, and one gentleman stood up and applauded diversity in a school. That's my That's, neighbor, Greg Conn. I like that man. Yes. Um, <laughs> but right I, 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 was, I just felt, well, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful uh, welcome to that. I, but I do feel as though that on a leadership level, uh, not on the community level, that there's um, there's a disconnect. I feel like the leadership doesn't realize the jewel that it has in its own parent base, and its own community. I couldn't agree with you more. That's absolutely, it was quite evident, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can get the uh, a different kind of leadership of that. Maybe, you know. maybe that has to happen. Too bad you live in Sag Harbor. If you lived in Springs, I'd ask you to run for the school board. You know, what, what, I live in Springs, but I can't run for the school uh -oh. board. I got too okay. much on my plate. All right, all right. <laughs> but uh, yes, and uh, I, the fact that we, what you really, we really all have to begin to to say to ourselves is, these people are here, mm -hmm. and now we need to get them integrated into our mm -hmm. society, into our culture. Mm -hmm. So they know who we are, and we know who they are, mm -hmm. and then we can build that bridge that you were talking about, mm -hmm. so that people become productive mm -hmm. and useful citizens. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. really the key, mm -hmm. you know, on the path to citizenship, mm -hmm. getting the right to vote. You know, those yeah. are all very very important things that uh, we want to see happen mm -hmm. for our our people here, sure, for sure. all of our people. Absolutely, um, because no one wants to live in fear. I, I think the other thing that Ola is hoping to do, with the, with the help of other local organizations or groups, um, is to help shine the light on the ways that these Latino communities and families are individually, how they are right now, uh, contributing to the betterment of the fabric of their community of Springs. And that could be something they're doing through their church congregation, because many people go to church uh, in the Latino community, and there are specific things that they're doing to the betterment of the local community. Not, not this myth of, I'm just sending money back to wherever, um, but what are the things that they're doing right? And they don't put a press release out on those things all the time. It's like, oh, we just did this thing, let's write it up and send it to the paper. That's not how they're thinking, but they're contributing to their local community, and I think that it might take a third-party organization like Ola to say, okay, great, you know what, let's 
put some of that information out there. It's not going to hurt. I also know Latino communities would be interested in helping out a school if they knew that let's raise two thousand dollars to replace um, that section of bleachers, you know, for our for our teams. Um, there wouldn't be a way that a group of Latinos wouldn't say, oh no, let, let's let's help out with that. But generally, they're not asked. There's an assumption that oh, they're not going to want to help. They just want something for free. They're not involved in that, and it's completely false. But we can't change perception until we start shining a light on these positives and, and correct information. Gee, I love that. That's just <laughs> wonderful. I do hope that you, you that we do these kind of things because it's so. very important. We can, we can. You know, it's just like I... You well, are right now. Well, I, I, <laughs> look, my charge in life is to save the world. <laughs> but, but also, uh, it is so true that I know that my own friend, Naomi Sanchez, who we talked about, Noemi, and uh, she does the health fair. Mm -hmm. She does this uh, organization that she worked with it, well, for women mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. gain some identity and independence. Mm -hmm. She also does the soup thing on mm -hmm. uh, that they do uh, once a month at the church, mm -hmm. you know. So, and this was a woman who, mm -hmm. you know, when I first met her 14 years ago, was just really beginning to learn how to speak in English. Mm -hmm. And now she has just become, and looking to get her GED. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are the kind of things that we have to help people to do so that they can really fulfill on their life's dreams like we all want to fulfill on our life streams. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think your organization is the one that's going to really work to do this. Well, thank you, thank you. And I wish you lots of luck in it. I, and thank keep so going, much. honey. We, we need <laughs> people you. like you. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate so much it. for coming. So it was a pleasure. I really <laughs> enjoyed talking to you. Oh, well, you as well. Thank and you. And we will be on. We will, we'll be on, by the way, on Channel 20. Okay. You'll see us. You'll see yourself okay. with your red. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and we'll continue to work on these issues, okay. which are very important. And I'll us. follow up with you on the GED, the next, please, the next step. Please, sure. please, because it is something that I really am interested in seeing happen. Okay. Anything that furthers education is always a great thing. All right, so thanks for coming. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.